Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is a Let Me Bore You to Sleep number 54 I think so the whole idea behind this live because I'm recording this live and I'm broadcasting it on Facebook however I will also post it on YouTube and my website and I'll also make it available to download free as an mp3 and a video and it'll also be on my podcasts on SoundCloud and Spreaker and it might be on Spotify as well anyway as you can see it's just me and my boy Andre and this is one of those rare moments where he's not wiggling and wobbling to get away he just seems quite happy to just be lying there in fact he might be asleep so that's one of the the benefits for him is to have the most boring daddy in the world and I'll talk to him and he just he does just his eyes glaze over and his eyes close and he falls asleep don't you so the point behind these let me bore you to sleep is it's in the title it really is just me talking for probably about an hour about not much and the idea is that as I talk you get even more bored and It can seem sometimes, I imagine, let's say if you're listening and only listen if you can safely close your eyes. Let's say you're listening and you got me talking about maybe watching uh, Danger Mouse on television when I was perhaps 14 years old. And you might start to wonder, what's that got to do with falling asleep and being relaxed and calm? Maybe I should shave my head and be like the Bond villain, you know, with the cat, except this time it's a ferret. So hi to everyone that's watching. I'm doing a little wave there. I try and uh, stick to just talking and not distracting myself too much from the amazing excitement of what's gonna come. I don't know what he's doing now. At the moment he's, um, he's shedding his hair because he's now grown the winter coat and I'm covered in his hairs because he has two coats two, two layers and this time of the year 
he goes quite white as I don't know if you can see if you are watching on a video you can see the whiteness underneath and he actually feels heavier as well you bite his bite give me a little nibble you give me a little nibble what's that about hmm? So, I'd just like to thank those of you that have been supporting me lately by telling me that what I'm doing is useful. That actually means a lot to me to know that even though it might seem like I'm just rabbiting on and on and on and on what I do online the various different sessions that I've done has been helpful to people and I get quite a few messages from people telling me that they go to sleep watching me or they fall asleep watching me every night and on some level it reminds me of just how boring I must be but on another level it's it's nice to it feels nice to know that I'm able to help people from a distance and I'll do a little wave whenever anyone says hello to me rather than because um, I don't want to disrupt the flow of your drowsiness if there is a drowsiness occurring within your mind and it's been a been a strange day today my friend knocked on my door and he he had a, a seagull in his hand which sounds like the start of some kind of weird joke but it's actually true he was holding a seagull which he found and it's this seagull was hopping around so he brought it you know basically rescued it and brought it to my house so put him put the seagull I called him Peter and uh maybe a bit forward of me to give him my to name him who, who am I to name him he probably already got a name but anyway I, I put him into Andre's cage and so that Andre could sort of keep his distance because he's very in inquisitive aren't you Andre's very inquisitive about uh, new new people in my home or in our home and uh, so if you came and visited here the first thing you'd want to do is look inside your bag so if you had uh, if you have a carrier bag or if you have a handbag or any kind of bag you know the other day my friend said have you got any carrier bags I said yes because he needed them because he was going to take his dog for a walk and I had a few that were split and earlier a couple of weeks ago and he said have you got any ones that don't have a hole in I said they all have holes in I say you put stuff into them so he loves carrier bags absolutely loves any kind of um, he likes small places where he can cuddle up and I don't quite know why but it's what he does he's got his favorite carry bag which is a it was it was white originally and it's uh, now various different colors but he likes to sleep inside there sometimes and I realize if you're listening to this on iTunes or SoundCloud or Spreaker 
or one of the various podcasts that I have, you can't see Andre. So what I would suggest is not necessarily to watch the video if you've already listened to it, but you can maybe just visit YouTube or my website or come to the Facebook page and you can check him out and see what he looks like when I'm rubbing his tummy. He's very calm, aren't you? He's very calm and relaxed. He's never more than about 30 seconds from being in a deep sleep. Which I think is something quite good to learn from. Realising that maybe, maybe none of us are. Maybe we're all really not that far away from being able to just go to sleep. In the same way a baby is. Because we're born like that. A baby can fall asleep before a fart is completed that quickly. And I know that we're not babies anymore, but we're still humans. We're still. I think he wants to go down. Do you want to say goodbye? Say goodbye. Say goodbye to everyone. He's gone. It's just me and you now. So, I like the idea of having that, that ability to think that it's still there to be able to just drift off into a, a natural safe sleep when you want it to happen but not when you are trying to force it to happen because sleep doesn't work that way nor does happiness nor does hunger nor does anything you can't nothing really you can't force anything even going to the toilet that can cause problems if you try and force it. You know, it's about naturally happening. You can't force yourself to feel relaxed. So it's allowing it, giving yourself permission. So I like the idea of knowing that that ability that we were all born with is still there where it's like just allowing it to happen and you kind of say to yourself or maybe not even with words but just kind of okay just let it happen naturally let the let the sleep commence what I've learned over the years because I've been I've lived in lots of different places is actually I don't need it to be quiet in order to sleep and neither does a baby there's something I've also noticed that sometimes I get into a thing where my hearing seems to just switch off when I'm in bed and then I can sometimes I wake up before my hearing wakes up but I'm not awake wake like with my eyes open you know um, doing me knitting or anything like that I'm not like fully functional I'm just maybe lying there with my eyes closed but awake aware of something maybe uh, the vibrations of something happening maybe in the flat below or outside in the garden and then the sound starts so it's as if 
and I didn't realize that this happens and maybe it's just a natural thing that happens but I didn't realize that it's as if the ears just turn off so regardless of what sounds are around the, the hearing for those sounds anything that could be classed as a disturbing phenomena uh, would just be dismissed allowing natural sleep to just occur and I know that I mention I mention safety quite a lot in my sessions possibly more nowadays than I used to I'm probably more in the hypnosis sessions than in you know the purely I would class the daily hypnosis sessions I do as probably the most purely focused hypnosis -y things as opposed to me when I do these let me bore you to sleep boring long drawn out sessions but safety I think it's quite good in a sense of because this is transparent what I do is transparent and I've got no idea why I'm moving my hand around for some reason that seems to represent transparency it's you can see me talking you know that it's me talking uh, if you you know I realize that you might just be on here to laugh at my beard but it's it's not funny beard week it's you know this is this is what I look like it's not it's not a fake beard someone did ask me once if I was growing my beard for charity or for a bet for a bet so the idea that you can actually listen to me before you listen to me might sound strange but you can listen to what I say bef you know before you decide to close your eyes and listen to me and go to sleep or uh, benefit from those specific suggestions that will sink into your mind and make those changes you know as you move forward with your life but you can listen first, you can listen to the sessions, you can listen to my words and you can realize that actually everything is there, everything is transparent, there's nothing hidden. You're not coming and seeing me having a session and then leaving thinking, I wonder what he said to me, I can't remember everything because you can replay it and you can re-listen. And also, when you listen to something, maybe an audio, was it edited? Was it, you know, like a lot of videos today on YouTube, you see the editing because every three words, the picture changes. It's like they don't even, it's, and it's really fast paced talking. And I don't edit. I don't edit videos, I don't edit the audios other than maybe to try and put a nice intro perhaps on videos and I've done that in the past and occasionally with the audios if I don't know, let's say let's say a beanstalk started to grow in the garden and and made loads of noise you know then I'd maybe try and edit that out of the audio 
if it was uh, just a recorded session. But I can't do any of that when it's live. Everything has to be, it's, there's no, there's nowhere to hide. Although I am trying to hide my belly, trying to hold it in a little bit. So that's a transparency of this, which means the honesty there and the genuine or genuine uh, ness of this allows you to also get in touch with the truth about how you feel and allows you just to get rid of some of the some of the stuff that gets in the way of your happiness and the things that used to get in the way of you sleeping easily, calmly, safely, feeling more relaxed. So this can be like a safe space that we all have within ourselves, except we're kind of congregating in this safe space. Does that, does that make sense? And again, thank you to all of those that are watching live, listening live, watching after it's live, listening to it after it's live. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. And quite often, you know, I don't always talk about actually sleeping when I do these sleeping sessions. And sometimes I will talk about sleeping. And just going back to a baby. If you think of a baby that you know that just, just seems to be able to sleep through anything. Literally seems to be able to just sleep. like there's nothing you could do to keep that baby awake except feed it it he or she rather so the baby wants to sleep and isn't it amazing that the more they sleep the more awake they are when they're not asleep with those big eyes looking at you so alert watching everything and then you talk to them and you can actually watch them and see their eyelids just start to close and open and then close a bit more and open and then just close all the way I've seen children fall asleep while they were eating, which is very funny to see. They're just like, I mean, I'm talking feeding themselves like a baby or one, two year old eating with a spoon. I'm doing the hand mo movements of eating in case anyone doesn't know what eating means. I don't know why I was doing that. yet they'd fall asleep. You know, recently, I think it was about three, four nights ago, I've got a tendency of staying up all night and sleeping more during the day. That's just my, kind of my lifestyle at the moment. And I'm quite fortunate in, I can fairly much, sleep quite easily during the day and 
I can fall asleep quite easily. And I do do self-hypnosis when I go to bed. Whenever I go to bed, I, I do different things. Sometimes I just tell myself that I feel relaxed in my body, feel relaxed in my mind, uh, feel safe, feel calm. Um, and other things, sometimes I tell myself that the, the healing that is needed in my body, in whichever part of my body, is going to get that healing. The healing is going to move through my blood to whichever part of my body requires it the most. And whilst I sleep, sometimes I'll say while I sleep, depends how intellectual I'm feeling. That healing will take place and I will wake up feeling refreshed. And I'll be honest with you, I bore myself so much that I fall asleep quite often before I've even finished what I wanted to say. I do actually have sometimes a specific um, bunch of things that I want to tell myself, uh, whether it's uh, feeling more confident, whether it's uh, a physical issue that I'd like to correct or to heal. Um, It may be, it could be my breathing because I, I have sleep apnea. So I tell myself quite often that the oxygen, the air ways will be open so that I can breathe easily and breathe naturally throughout the night and or throughout the day, you know, wherever I'm sleeping. And that my body will change its position naturally if needed in order to make sure that I'm always able to breathe easily and naturally and so that the, the flow of the breath can enter and exit my body naturally and in that oxygen can then enter into my lungs sending that oxygen around my body and into my brain increasing the stimulation of those parts of the brain that are needed for my general well-being I'll be honest with you I don't always get to the end of that sentence something in my brain just switches off and I just I just drift off other times I'll I will just I'll make it simple I think okay I just do three sentences and that's all I do I just say to myself I feel relaxed and calm I feel safe, I feel sleepy. I feel relaxed and calm. I feel safe. I feel sleepy. I feel relaxed and calm. I feel sleepy. I feel safe. I feel safe. I feel 
relaxed and calm. I feel sleepy. I feel sleepy. I feel and, and I sometimes I just forget I forget what it is that I'm actually saying and I'm actually trying to keep myself awake so that I can say the things that I want to say in order to send myself asleep how about that for some weird logic It's like setting your alarm for two o'clock in the morning just to remind you, you know, uh, with a little message on the phone saying, are you asleep yet? It's, uh, it's not really... I mean, these things are kind of very old fashioned affirmations. I say old fashioned as in they've been around for longer than any of us have been alive. And the first time I ever heard any such thing as an affirmation was the Pink Panther films, where Inspector Clouseau, his boss, is the person in charge of him kept saying I'm feeling better and better in every way every day in every way I feel better something like that and that was actually a, a real therapeutic affirmation that was very famous many many years ago and although when I do it at night it's not or before I go to sleep it's not necessarily as an affirmation more as a suggestion but then that's what an affirmation is in a sense it's a suggestion but affirming the belief affirming that suggestion I hope that affirming is a real word I broke it off of affirmation I kind of thought affirming affirmation it's ationing affirmationing making sure that I really should read the dictionary. And sleeping. Really is our birthright. And I actually do have a video that I made, an audio as well, called Sleeping Is Your Birthright, that I made in like 2011 time, and I think I'm wearing a red jumper in that, but I don't think I'm wearing glasses, because in them days I didn't need to wear glasses um, all the time although I don't wear them all the time because not when I'm in a shower although I don't have a shower, I have baths but not when I'm in a bath either because they get all steamed up that's not the only reason but it's so I've got these actor lens, actor light lenses on my glasses so when I go out Let's say it's daytime. 
because they're not going to really work in the night time but let's say it's daytime it doesn't have to be uh, in a summer at any time of the year whether it's sun or not the act lights are stimulated um, and when it rains again I'm doing the hand, hand movements of rain which looks more like I'm milking a cow but or a goat but anyways the idea is when it rains the water goes onto the lenses and it leaves a streak of like a white streaks down the lenses it's very unusual I remember talking about that um, to somebody because I came in and it was in the afternoon probably about 3.30 a couple of months back probably maybe August time so I go into the into the uh, into his flat and it's dark in the hallway because it's, there's no lights there's, there is a light but there's no light in there's no windows or anything and it wouldn't be dark if there was light would there I suppose but there is a, a light switch which activates a light which then lights up the darkness but I'm not sure if he had a light bulb at that time but it's not necessarily relevant to the story so I go into the flat and I turn right and as usual everything was a bit dark because I had sunshades on although they're not normally sunshady that makes sense that um, when I'm inside they're just clear and you can barely see my eyes what do I look like I've got tiny little eyes I haven't they're normal size I think and I always worry about that you know to have the to have such strong lenses that when I take my eyes off, not my eyes, but my glasses off, that my eyes become half the size to what they look like with the lenses. And as as time's going, my, my lenses are getting stronger. I don't mean time as in they're stronger now than before I started the session, but I might end up with like really thick glasses, which in a sense I'm not that bothered because if I was worried about having thick glasses I wouldn't have a beard like this you know I'm clearly not that bothered about my appearance but I don't I just it's just I don't want to shock people by everyone thinking I've got big eyes and and then suddenly take my glasses off and giving them a sh making them jump it's like I just took my eyes off or something so and I couldn't see very well because I was inside and I still had these shades on but I could just see bits of people through the streaks on the, the lenses and it was very strange I'm not sure why I remember it because I didn't write it down in my diary it wasn't one of those memories that warranted a journal entry and as I was saying earlier I the other night talking about babies and how easy it is to sleep and how we've got that natural ability to sleep in the same way we've got that natural ability to know when we're hungry you know the body tells you when it's time to go to the toilet the body tells you when it's time to drink water your body tells you it lets you know there's a there's a feeling isn't there that we all have for certain things and I guess we we increase those more and more different feelings depending on what the thing is so I like to drink coke I don't want it's not an advert but I have a certain feeling 
when I want to have a drink of Coke or I want to open a can of Coke. And that feeling is very different from when I want to go to the toilet. I don't even know why I said that. Obviously it's a different feeling, but we've got all these different feelings for different things. But I wasn't born with the feeling of needing to open a can of Coke. We were all born with the feeling of knowing when you're tired. We were all born with the ability to just drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep. So I quite like that. I think uh, we're quite fortunate to have that within us and I was thinking about the other night I knew that I needed really to go to bed kind of you know had stuff to do the following day and I really didn't want to and it was like being a child again like a young child at a wedding when I say our wedding I don't mean some weird situation that happens in some countries I'm talking about you know like a relative's wedding or something like that and I'm there dancing with my cousins and maybe, you know, disco dancing like Shaking Stevens, singing along to I'm in the mood for dancing. Gives you an idea of my age. Dancing Queen. Mind you, Dancing Queen's popular for everyone, I think. And I would force myself to stay awake. Had I known about the the trick of pouring cold water on my face, I might have done that, but I, I didn't know about that at the time. I'd not seen that episode of Starsky and Hutch, so I hadn't learned that trick of keeping awake. But now, the other night, that's what I was doing. I was trying to stay awake because I didn't want to go to sleep. I wanted to be awake and I wanted to do things and I was enjoying being awake. And that's something quite nice. But at the same time, the more I tried to stay awake, the harder it became. And I was watching something on telly and I was just, oh. And I wanted to, I wanted so much to just watch it. I really did and I just found myself just drifting and drifting and sort of coming back and then just drifting again and drifting again. So it's, uh, it reminds me really back in 1992, 1993. I used to work long hours. I used to start very early in the morning. I think I used to start at 7 or 7.30 in the morning, which meant getting up a lot earlier than that. And I'd be working till, sometimes I do overtime, so I'd be working long days. And I still wouldn't go to bed early. So I wouldn't get more than maybe six hours sleep from Monday to Friday. And then the Friday evening, I was so tired. 
but I wanted to stay up late. I wanted to watch The Word. There was a program called The Word on Channel 4 in those days. And maybe I was working Saturday morning as well, so I had to get up extra early because that's we started at 6.30 or 6 o'clock on Saturdays. But I wanted to stay awake because I, I just... I didn't want to go to sleep, but the more I tried to stay awake, the more I just slept. And I did, I'd fall asleep. I'd be sitting up in my bed with the pillows behind me. Although the pillows, I guess, were always behind me, aren't you? Even if you were asleep, they're behind you, aren't they? You don't have them on your face. But yeah, this, it was... I need to get some pillows. I've been thinking about this. I've got quite a nice bed. It's a double bed. And the thing that I realized, because I've moved around a lot in my life. I've lived in lots of different places. And just in case you're wondering if I've got the pillow underneath my t-shirt, it's not, it's my muscles. I, I'd like to get, I've, I've got, so it's a nice bed, it's a double bed. It's not king size or queen size. I don't really know what the difference. But it's what I thought, and I didn't realize, now I know, and I've discussed it with other people, I've discussed it with one person. I don't, I don't want to exaggerate, one person. We had this discussion about a double bed. It's not a double bed at all. A double bed would be literally twice the width of a single bed and a double bed is not that a double bed is maybe another half the width of a single bed added on to a single bed so it's not really big enough for two people because I take up a bit of room and I like to spread myself I like to have, you know, sometimes if I lay on my, on my, the left side of me, on my left side rather, so I have the pillow underneath kind of my left ear and I have my left arm sometimes maybe up a little bit and I'll spread right out so that my right big toe pretty much touches the end of the bed on the other side on that side and my left foot touches the opposite side so I'm kind of I'm spreading but stretching my hips I quite like doing that it feels nice to just I like to stretch and Sometimes I will cuddle the, the duvet, which makes me think that maybe, maybe it's, it is time to find a special lady to share my life with. Or maybe I just like a duvet. It's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a weird one to figure out, but I do like my bed, but what I've noticed is I've got this headrest. So it's a big headrest that came with it, but it's not really comfortable enough to sit against. And the two pillows that I have aren't enough to really support my back. And I think, well, all those years, I moved at least 40 times since I left school, before I moved here. I'm never gonna move again, <laughs> this is it. Um, but the, I always lived in, apart, apart from maybe two occasions, I've always lived in single beds. Always like, lived in a little room with a single bed. And I, that was my chair as well. I used to sit up in, in the bed, watch television, eat. You know, everything was kind of done at, on the bed. 
apart from when I was yeah, lucky enough to have a table. So I, I would, if I can, if I can choose, I will eat at a table as opposed to uh, in a chair. So I like. I don't know. I think it's laziness. I, I don't like to. I like to lift stuff, the food from the plate, to my mouth. I like that distance to be as, as minimal as possible. Plus, um, I shouldn't really admit to this, but I'm very. I can be quite a messy eater. As a sort of, if I'm eating my breakfast, I'm watching television. And I, I do eat my bread. I don't eat my breakfast at the table. Always eat it on the this chair, not on this, not out of the chair. It's in a bowl. I'm watching television, maybe, and I'll eat the breakfast, and it just drip. I don't know how, but it's as if I've got some kind of magnetic chest that mag that just attracts milk, and it just goes straight to my because I've got quite a hairy hairy chest. So I think the maybe it's the hairs that just grab the milk and I don't see it because I'm busy eating it or whatever or maybe the hairs grab the bowl and tip it I don't know so oh, you know yesterday I was having a meeting with someone uh, this lady came around my flat and I was talking to her and I'm just playing with my beard just just you know just twiddling it a little bit and I come across something and I realise it's a bit of breakfast. As I was like, oh, I actually found a couple of Rice Krispies in my beard. And they were tangled. I couldn't, so I had my breakfast just before she got there. And of course I told her because I don't like to hide anything. I like to be transparent. But afterwards I thought, that's probably quite embarrassing. Quite an embarrassing thing to tell somebody, isn't it? You just found a bit of your breakfast in your beard. Perhaps I shouldn't have eaten it in front of her, but... But trying to stay awake when you're tired reminds you that actually there is that feeling it's like a, a opposite kind of an opposite process trying to stay awake when you're tired is the same as trying to force yourself to go to sleep you know it doesn't work you can't force yourself to do stuff like that because Where's the love there? You know, you need to show yourself some love and be kind to yourself. And, you know, not being getting angry at yourself because you're not sleeping as quickly as you'd like to, or, you know, it's the whole thing. I've, I've been saying this for years. I even used to say it to clients when I was counseling privately privately you know when I had clients and stuff and they tell me about um, their internal dialogue and the things the things that they would say to themselves which were often well, they were very very rarely were they nice but some of the things were just horrible and I'd say to them would you say that to a small child would you go up to a small child in the street and say to them exactly what you just said to yourself? And the answer to that, I would say 99.9999% would be no. So if it's not, why is it good enough for you then? Why is that okay? And it's not. one of the most helpful things I ever heard I ever had said to me was to be kind to yourself a friend of mine told me that and this is when I just first met him really he's a Buddhist uh, ordained Buddhist and he's an amazing person 
And he said that to me, he said, be kind to yourself. And I'll be honest, I didn't know what it meant. Didn't know what it meant. It felt nice. It felt like he was um, telling me that he cared about me. That's, that's how I felt it, that he was offering love and there was a, a genuine uh, cons concern. And then I suppose over time I started thinking about it and coming to the conclusion that I guess it means whatever you want it to mean but to have that concern for yourself, to be kind to yourself, could mean any number of things depending upon the situation. Because, you know, eating chocolate and lots and lots of chocolate is really not a way to be kind to yourself if you're diabetic. It's a complete opposite. But sometimes a box of chocolates for someone that isn't diabetic, a box of chocolates can really, or a tub of ice cream, is being kind to yourself because it's given you some physical and uh, mental, emotional pleasure, distraction, uh, taking you away from whatever it was that was uh, troubling you at the time giving you space and showing yourself that kindness in that moment can really make the difference. Just like listening to me waffle on and on and on or sharing these videos with your friends, family, the audios with people that might find them useful. That's being kind to yourself, maybe. Reminding yourself that you are a wonderful person and that you deserve to be happy. That's being kind to yourself. But sometimes just watching a movie, a film that you like, or maybe you uh, a film that you've wanted to watch for a while that can be what you need having a nice bath eating some haagen or Ben and Jerry's or whatever your particular um, ice cream favourite is I like both actually. I like the. I do. I love Hagen and Ben and Jerry. They're my two favourite um, out of all the, the different makes. And I can feel myself smiling just thinking about it. I really, I don't eat that stuff very often. I really don't. I might. I know I look like I might do, but I don't. If I if I did, I would. I'd need to put the, <laughs> I'd need to put the the iPhone a lot further away so you could fit me in. It's uh, some of the chocolate ice cream is just phenomenal. And uh, I like cookie dough. And uh, yeah, it's making me want to have some ice cream now. Luckily for me, it's not always a blessing. I live in the middle of nowhere. Literally, I live nowhere near any shops uh, that I could buy stuff from like that. And at this time of night, it's impossible. I have to wait till tomorrow and get the nine o'clock bus and go and buy it. And by then, I wouldn't want to eat ice cream during the day unless it was summer. Well, there was no one watching. <laughs> no, 
honey. I might eat ice cream in the summer, but during the day, but generally not. But right now I could go for a nice bit of haagen -Dahl. I used to live in a place, in a place called Green Street in London, which is just up the road from, it used to be just up the road from West Ham football ground. And I used to come out of where I lived, turn right, is that this little dark alleyway thing, you used to go out. Opposite was a pub, turn right, and there was every shop I could ever need. There was like a supermarket, a uh, big, big supermarket. There was Iceland, which sold, sold all frozen stuff, so I could get as much ice cream as I wanted. There was some news agents. There, just everything I could need or want was there. And every single takeaway possible fast food was also around that area as well. And I've got no idea why I'm mentioning this. That's a good thing about these is, one of the good things about this, doing this live, is I do lose track sometimes, but I'm a bit more aware of it than when I'm just recording a video or just recording an audio. But at the same time, I've got no idea how long I've been on here for. I might have been on here for um, 30 minutes. I might have been live for an hour. I really don't know. And the idea was to just talk and talk for an hour and then finish and get on with the rest of the day. But I've no idea how long I've been talking for. And I don't know how to find out. It's got to be a way of figuring it out. So I reckon it's probably heading towards an hour. So I'm probably going to bring this to an end. If it's less than an hour, then it's less than an hour. But if it's more than an hour, it's you know more than that. But I was aiming for an hour. But I don't have my only time calculator is on the phone, and I'm using the phone to record this. But it doesn't have, so when you do a, um, a live broadcast on YouTube, it comes up and it tells you how long you've been on there for, but not on Facebook. And perhaps I need to get a clock, but I like the idea of not having a clock on the wall. I've never ever yeah, my whole adult life, I've never had a clock on the wall. Never put a clock on the wall, ever. But there have been times when I've had a clock in the room. So, for example, uh, a video player, there might be a clock on that. Or in, because I lived in a lot of rooms, just the bedroom, so they'd, I'd have a no, an electric clock because I'd have to be able to have an alarm to wake me up in the morning for work so I'd have a clock there but never had a clock on the wall maybe I should get one there's something about I don't know there's something about not being a slave to time not being too attached to the minutes that are going by but on the same hand it's on the other hand it's 4.30 on the other hand it's 
it's quite handy for knowing what time it is. So maybe I will, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get like this big massive clock and put it on my wall just there. You know, I used to years ago when I was, yeah, I used to make recordings. So I used to work in a, a couple of places uh, doing the counseling and they'd have clocks in the room because you'd always need to know what time it is because each session would last for 50 minutes and you'd need to start to wind things down maybe five minutes before and then there'd be 10 minutes between that session ending and the next session beginning so it'd be 10 minutes really to sort of prepare for the next person and what I used to do is make sessions in those rooms. So there's quite a few of my sessions where you've just, if the audios, sometimes videos as well, where you've just got the, the, the clock. That was my impression of a clock. And you, you could hear that in the background. Even going back to 2006, when I first started making the audio recordings, I used to do these live sessions, lead these relaxation group sessions in the local, a couple of rehab, alcohol and drug rehab centers. And they all had clocks in their rooms, in the, the rooms that I did the recordings and did the sessions. And a couple of people at the clients used to say to me that when they listened to me, because I used to make CDs for them to listen to, then I started making MP3s and putting them onto the website. But they say when they listened to the recording, it's as if they were back in that particular session because of that clock, it it tr seemed to, that ticking seemed to transport them back into that room in their mind whilst they were listening to my voice and relaxing. So maybe I might get a clock. I don't know. So I'm I'm going to bring this to an end because I'm not sure what the time is. But thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to this. Let me bore you to sleep. If you would like to support me, you can uh, support me on Patreon. And the Patreon page is, I don't know what it is, it's something. Um, I really need to get on the ball with that. There's a link anyway somewhere. Um, just let me know if you if you're interested. I can just give you the link, and uh, also let me know if what I've been doing now in the past, you know, over the last twelve years, whatever, anything you know, if you if you find it useful, and perhaps anything that you'd like me to do going forward I'm feeling really tired now Whew, I am I did a video years ago where it was, I was lying in my bed, recording, doing a, like a softly spoken or maybe a whisper sleep session. And I actually fell asleep. And it was re just recording it, so it wasn't live. So it was supposed to be maybe 40 minutes long ended up being about an hour and a half, two hours. And I think the, the camera, I think the battery probably ran out and it just, you know, 
So the next day, I recharged the battery and went back and you know, list, watched the video. And it's really, really nice video, and I did upload it. Um, but I did edit it because I kept falling asleep and then sort of waking up and, you know, carrying on. Eventually I fell asleep and started snoring so loudly. You could see the, the camera was shaking. I don't think it was scared. I think maybe the, the bed was banging against the tripod. But it was really, really loud snoring. So that's that would be a downside if I was going to be doing these live and I fell asleep. Because then I'd start, who knows what. So I don't want to, uh, something I don't really want to do live on camera snoring it just showed how boring I was to myself just like now I could really just drift off it's like my whole body is just ready for a nice nap I just feel so relaxed. But I won't. I'm just going to say goodbye. And I'll see you next time. Lots of love. Bye.